I think something different is actually happening. Um, I think something different is happening with how companies are getting built. Um, and maybe I could do the long version, kind of the, the slightly long version of this, which is I, I think there's actually a whole new, a whole new way companies are being built in the last 10 years. And, and I think that uh, business people and MBAs turn out to be very central to it in a way that's different in the past. Um, so I kind of divide the story of how tech, the great technology companies got built kind of into three phases. And I think we're in the third phase now. The first phase was in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and it was so crazily hard. If you talk to people who were in business then or you read the stories, it was so hard to build a new tech company. It was such an unbelievably sort of exceptional thing to do that you, you, you only really had these really extreme characters who, who would do it, and there were a pretty small number of them. And they were extreme, extreme characters. Like they, were, they, they make all the current like high-octane entrepreneurs look like wusses. Um, and the ones I'm thinking of, Thomas Watson Sr., if you want to read like, what it's like to work for somebody who's harsh, read the book on Thomas Watson Sr. Um, you know, he makes, he makes uh, all, all of today's entrepreneurs look like cream puffs. Um, he would just literally sit in his staff meetings for like five hours and just scream at his, I would scream at his guys. It was just this, and he built this astonishing company, IBM, out the other side of that. Um, uh, uh, David Packard. Um, David Packard actually was quite a character. He, David Packard, people now remember for the HP way and for kind of the whole warm and fuzzy you know, kind of approach to running companies. When, when David Packard was actually running HP, he had two nicknames. Uh, one was Pappy, um, which is kind of what people remember, the kind of paternalistic uh, type. His other nickname was the mean one. Um, and he similarly would just you know, tear people apart. Um, and then Ross Perot is my favorite example. Ross Perot built the first great outsourcing company, one of the big tech successes in the 60s. Um, and of course, when, you know, he was fantastic as a business builder. When he came in contact with the American public, people went, what? Um, and you know, again, this sort of extreme personality. So you had some of this, this kind of, this sort of will to power thing that was happening. Uh, and by the way, the VCs in those days, I think were very similar. Tom Perkins, who's become re-famous again lately, um, <laughs> you know, is, is the same kind of character. He's, he's, an ex he's a very, very extreme character and, 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 and he always was, but that's what it took, you know, for him to do what he did in the seventies uh, and eighties in venture capital. So those are kind of the extreme days. And then I think both VC and entrepreneurship, tech entrepreneurship sort of professionalized. Um, and so you had a lot of VCs then, and this includes great VCs, John Doerr, Mike Morris, Jim Breyer, um, you know, who are business people or investors first um, and, and never, never ran companies. Um, and then you had this kind of move through the 90s where you had this kind of default model where the one thing everybody knew was that founders couldn't possibly run their companies. And so you would have a founder and then you would basically promote or fire them to chairman or CTO. And then you'd put in a professional CEO as fast as possible. And I think what happened is that model just got extreme. Um, and I think by the late 90s in the Valley, we were mostly building companies that were kind of shells um, or, you know, kind of like puff pastries uh, uh, of companies where, you know, they really didn't have at the height of the bubble in 98, 99, the products that were getting built for the most part weren't very good. And these companies were kind of on this bomb run to get public as fast as possible. And you had all these catchphrases uh, like go big or go home. Uh, or my other favorite one at the time, which was forget details, just do deals. Um, and so you had this really kind of mercenary hit and run approach to building companies. And then all those companies vaporized after the crash because it turned out they didn't have valuable products. They didn't have deep engineering capability. And then all the engineers who worked for those companies hated working for those companies because they were completely sales driven, sales led, these kind of mercenary kind of exercises at, at, the, at the height of, of, of how bad it got. Now I think you've got the exact opposite thing. I think the pendulum has swung all the way in the other direction, which is now we all understand and take for granted founder CEO, technical founder CEO is a good thing. You know, Mark Zuckerberg is kind of the apotheosis of kind of the, the idea that we have now. Um, and so now what's been lost for a lot of the entrepreneurs, a lot of the entrepreneurs are engineers, but not business people. Now what's been lost is a lot of the actual art of building a business. Um, and in particular, what's been lost is the art of sales and marketing. Um, and a lot of today's founders, one of the big issues we deal with is they're very technical, they're very product centric. They're building great technology, and they just don't have a clue about sales and marketing. And what's more is they almost have an aversion to learning about it. It's almost like a post-traumatic stress kind of thing, like, you know, 15 years after the crash. Um, and so now the challenge for a lot of these companies is how to take what are actually fantastic products and fantastic technology and then integrate in top-end business thinking, top-end sales and marketing thinking, and top-end operational thinking. And so I think we actually collectively have a huge opportunity to kind of put the pieces back together. And I think that's what the next five years are going to be about.